to how to you do step by step deadly. Now there are certain things I want to talk about before I start my video on teaching you how to build a deck step by step. There are certain things that you need to know. First of all, when building a deck, um, the first thing that you obviously do is go and see how other people have built their decks. You're going to go online and you're going to check various places or maybe even ask your friend. Now, this is good. Uh, this is one of the first steps and you know, we can say technically the right way of deck building. But really, if you want to build a deck properly, if you want to make a deck that is your own, and you want to really master a new deal, and find that when you're building a deck, you don't really know what's going on, you don't know how, you don't know how this deck plays, you know, what is this deck's play style, what is this archetype, how does this work, you know, when this person does all these effects, and does all these combo wonders, I'm so confused, I don't know what is going on. So you don't get confused. This is where you need to practice. The aim of building a deck in Yu-Gi-Oh! is first, take a deck that you are familiar with, or if not, take you know, get an idea from someone else's deck. Then practice with that deck. When you feel familiar with that deck, put in your own ideas. You know, put in cards that you know you feel may help you. Uh, or you feel that you know fits your playstyle. Deck building is about making a deck that suits you. Make something that you are happy with. And in this video, I'm going to show you to do just that. And hopefully, you are going to become one step closer to being a Yu-Gi-Oh master. So with that said, let's start with the rest of the video. In this video, I'm going to talk about deck building and ask a series of questions concerning deck building. I will answer those questions while going in depth about deck building. Let's start with these questions. 1. What is a deck? 2. What do card relationships mean in Yu-Gi-Oh? 3. What is an archetype? 4. What is PCR? 5. What is NCR? 6. What is ACR? Question number one. What is a deck? A deck is a series of cards that contains monsters, spells, and traps. Also, a deck consists of 40 to 60 cards. Question number two. What do card relationships mean in Yu-Gi-Oh? Card relationships is when effects on a card interact with other effects in the hand, deck, field, or another card to produce an action which may be either positive or negative. Question number three. What is an archetype? An archetype is a series of cards sharing the same name. This includes effects of those cards as well. Please take note that an archetype has a play style that is linear. However, there may be exceptions to this rule. Question number four. What is PCR? PCR stands for Positive Card Relationships. Question number five. What is NCR? NCR stands for negative card relationships. Question number six. What is ACR? ACR stands for archetype card relationships. In order to teach you deck building, there is more information you need to know. Before you start deck building, there are key questions you need to ask yourself. These questions are as follows. 1. What type of deck am I building? 2. What is the goal of the deck I am building? 3. What is the ideal board? 4. What does the deck follow the cap system of understanding? Question number 1. What type of deck am I building? As you know, there are 6 types of decks, so it's important you choose the type of deck you are building. 1. Archetype 2. Dual Archetype 3. Multi-Archetype 4. Engine 5. Freestyle 6. Anti-Meta Question number 2. What is the goal of the deck I am building? After you have chosen the type of deck you are going to build, it is important that you have a goal for the deck you are going to build. 
A goal is extremely important in the initial steps of deck building. Get yourself a rough idea of the goal of your deck. Write it down if you need to. Your goal is now your compass. When you go astray, remember to look at the goal of your deck. Question number three. What is the ideal board? This is a question you need to answer for yourself. What vision of victory do you have in the deck? Make sure to write this down if it helps. The image you have of the cards on the field that will get you to your win scenario is important. Make sure to keep that image in your mind so your goal at this point is to create your deck that is close to your win scenario that you pictured. Question number four. Does the deck follow the CAP system of understanding? CAP in Yu-Gi-Oh stands for Comprehension, Application, and Practicality. Apply this system after you've completed making your deck. Okay, now I will give a demonstration on deck building. All right, now let me give you a visual demonstration on how to deck build in Yu-Gi-Oh. So your first step is to select the type of deck that you're going to make. The six types of decks to make in Yu-Gi-Oh are anti-meta, archetype, dual archetype, multi-archetype, engine, and freestyle. Now, once you've selected the type of deck that you are going to make, we will begin. So for the purposes of this video and to teach you how to deck build, I'm going to choose Archetype. So the Archetype I have chosen is called Altergeist. The next step is to decide a goal for your deck. How do we decide a goal for the Altergeist deck? Let's have a look at the Altergeist cards. Okay, and here is our first monster, Altergeist Melusik. Let's read that effect. This card can attack directly. When this card inflicts battle damage to your opponent, you can target one card your opponent controls. Send it to the graveyard. If this card is sent from the field to the graveyard, you can add one Altergeist monster from your deck to your hand. Except Altergeist Melusik. You can only use this effect of Altergeist Melusik once per turn. Its attack points are 500 and those defense points are 300. Let's zoom back out. Okay, that is one of the monsters in Altergeist. Let's go to the next lineup of monsters in Altergeist. So let's go to the monster on our left. It is called Altergeist Silcatus. Let's read that effect. Quick effect. You can return one other Altergeist card you control to the hand. Then target one card your opponent controls. Return it to the hand. If this card is sent from the field to the graveyard, you can target one Altergeist trap in your graveyard. Add that target to your hand. You can only use each effect of Altergeist Silcatus once per turn. Let's zoom back out. Go to the middle monster known as Altergeist Marionetta. Its effect. Where this card is no more summoned, you can set one Altergeist trap directly from your deck to your spell and trap card zone. You can target one Altergeist card you control and one Altergeist monster in your graveyard. Send that card on the field to the graveyard and if you do, special summon that monster from your graveyard. You can only use this effect of Altergeist Marionetta once per turn. Let's zoom back out. And finally, let's go to the other monster known as Altergeist Kankeri. Altergeist Kankeri. Let's read that effect. When an opponent's monster declares an attack, if you control an Altergeist card, you can special summon this card from your hand. And if you do, negate that attack. If this card is special summoned, you can target one face up card your opponent controls negate the effects of that card while it and this monster are face up on the field. Let's zoom back out. Now let us read, let us go back to the monsters again and see those attack points. Let's go to Altergeist Silcatus. The attack points of Altergeist Silcatus are 800, defense points 1500. Zoom back out. Go to Marionetta. Its attack points are 1600. Its defense points are 1700. Let's zoom back out. Go to Kankeri. Its attack points are zero and its defense points are 2400. And here are the last in deck Altergeist monsters. We have Altergeist Multifaker. Let's read that effect. 
If you activate a trap except during the damage step, you can special summon this card from your hand. If this card is special summoned, you can special summon one Altergeist monster from your deck in defense position. Except Altergeist Multifaker. You cannot special summon the turn you activate this effect except Altergeist monsters. You can only use each effect of Altergeist Multifaker once per turn. Let's zoom back out. And the last monster, Altergeist Pixiel. Let's read that effect. You can tribute this card, excavate the top three cards of your deck and add one excavated Altergeist card to your hand. Also send the rest to the graveyard. You can only use each effect of Altergeist Pixiel once per turn. Let's zoom back out. Alrighty then, and now let's look at the extra deck monsters of Altergeist. And here you have it. You can see all the Altergeist traps. Now let's go and read the traps and their effects one by one. Let's start this. We have Altergeist Camouflage. Let's read that effect. Target one Altergeist monster you control. Equip this card to it. Your opponent cannot target it for attacks, but it does not prevent your opponent from attacking you directly. Negate an opponent's monster effect that activates by targeting the equipped monster. If an Altergeist card or cards you control will be destroyed by battle or card effect, you can banish this card from your graveyard instead. Zoom back out. Let's go to the next trap. Altergeist Manifestation. Let's read that effect. Target one Altergeist monster in your graveyard, special summon it in attack position, and if you do, equip it with this card. When this card leaves the field, destroy that monster. You can banish this card from your graveyard, then target one Altergeist trap in your graveyard and add it to your hand. You can only use this effect of Altergeist manifestation once per turn. Zooming back out to the next Altergeist trap, personal spoofing. Let's read that effect. Once per turn, you can shuffle one other Altergeist card from your hand or face up from your field into the main deck. Add one Altergeist monster from your deck to your hand. Let's zoom back out. Let's go back in to Altergeist Protocol. Let's read that effect. The activation and effects of Altergeist cards activated on your field cannot be negated. When your opponent activates a monster effect, you can send one other face-up Altergeist card you control to the graveyard, negate the activation, and if you do, destroy it. You can only use this effect of Altergeist Protocol once per turn. And here are the three Altergeist extra deck monsters. Let's go to one of them. Altergeist Primer Banshee. Let's read that effect. During the main phase, quick effect, you can tribute one other Altergeist monster, but you summon one Altergeist monster from your deck to your zone this card points to. If this card is sent from the field to the graveyard, you can target one Altergeist card in your graveyard, add it to your hand. You can only use each effect of Altergeist Primer Banshee once per turn. Let's zoom back out. Let's go to the next monster, Altergeist Hextia. Let's read that effect. Gains attack equal to the original attack of each Altergeist monster it points to. When a spell, trap, or effect is activated, quick effect, you can tribute one Altergeist monster this card points to, negate the activation. And if you do, destroy that card. If this card is sent from the field to the graveyard, you can add one Altergeist card from your deck to your hand. You can only use this effect of Altergeist Hextia once per turn. Let's zoom back out. Let's go to the last Altergeist extra deck monster. Altergeist Kidolga. Let's read that effect. When another Altergeist monster you control inflicts battle damage to your opponent, you can target one monster in their graveyard, special summon it to your zone this card points to, but each turn it cannot attack unless this card has already declared an attack that turn. If this card is destroyed by battle, you can target one Altergeist card in your graveyard, add it to your hand. Let's zoom back out. Alrighty then, so let us discuss now the goal of this deck. Looking at this deck in more detail, we can see that this deck likes to search cards, put a monster that has a negate effect, and basically keep on putting resources in the field to keep the negation wide open. We discover that the goal of this deck is to stop the plays of the opponent. That is the goal. So what we want to do is maintain this goal for Altergeist. How are we going to do this? Well, we're going to do this by using PCRs, NCRs, and ACRs. PCR are positive card relationships. 
Now, positive card relationships in deck building are cards in your deck that promote pluses. A positive card relationship is a card that adds you a card from your hand, from your deck, graveyard, and even banish zone. Also, positive card relationships are cards that usually add you advantage. Let's talk about now negative card relationships or NCR. NCR are cards in Yu-Gi-Oh that deny you positive card relationships. So these are cards that stop you from adding cards from your deck, graveyard, or banish zone. They stop you putting cards on your side of the field. So they deny you positive card relationships. And the more usually negative card relationships that you face, so the more NCRs that your opponent does to you, then there's a strong likelihood that for the rest of the duel, you're going to lose. So essentially, the aim of your deck is to produce as many PCRs, or as uh, I am saying, positive card relationships as possible. You ideally want to have at least four you know every turn you know two if possible four is the ideal you know it's the dream world you know if you can do that but you know two is fine but four is the best if you can manage to uh, perform like four pcrs four positive card relationships you know every turn if you have um, effects like these you know every turn then the duel will generally go in your favor and you will win now we have ACR. ACR are archetype card relationships. These are archetype specific cards that add you pluses to set archetype and allow you to initiate grand combos with that archetype. They are key cards in the archetype that you play. Alrighty then, so let's start. So when building a deck in Yu-Gi-Oh, it's important to first put the deck together. After you've put the deck together, or the, uh, this archetype deck in that case, practice with your deck. So for now, I'm going to draw my hand and now explain to you step by step on good deck building. And so this is my starting hand. As we can see, that looks like a pretty good start. So what are we going to do first? We are going to normal summon Menu Seek, like so. Then we're going to set spoofing and protocol, like so. Then we are going to end our turn. So on our opponent's turn, we're going to activate protocol, like so. Because protocol was activated, the effect of multifaker activates in our hand, like so. And now I think you're beginning to see the picture here. But as you have noticed with Altergeist, there's a severe problem. Altergeist, as we can see now, tend to have low attack points. So what are we going to do in terms of deck building? Well, as we will continue this duel or as you've practiced, you know, later on, how can we add more PCR? How can we add more positive card relationships into this deck and not destroy the archetype itself? What's important when deck building is that when you're building your deck, your deck and the cards in your deck are your best friends. You want the cards to work together. They need to gel. They need to function like putting butter on bread. Okay, so now let us break, look at this deck in detail and see the cards that I have added and I will explain to you the reasons why there are in this deck and the positive card relationships that they will create. So one of the cards that is in this deck is Magician's Left Hand. There is around three of them in this deck. Now the reason why I put Magician's Left Hand in this deck is one, let's read that effect. Negate the effect of your opponent's first trap card or effect that resolves each turn while you control a spellcaster type monster and if you do destroy that card. Now as I have been playing Altergeist, you know, I notice that the deck likes 
to negate. You know, that is its goal. That's what it likes to do. That is its specialty. So what you want to do is that when you make a deck and you find a deck has a special thing that it does or something that it does very easily, you want to capitalize on this and fully max it out. Obviously, you can uh, max it out or you can play it in any other way. You can add cards that possibly don't do this. But this is uh, generally my style of how I like to build decks. And I think that it is one of the best ways of building decks because when you put cards that help the deck's strength and minimize the deck's weaknesses, then you are less likely to break or have cards in your hand that are dead. So definitely left hand, in my opinion, is one of the really good cards in Altergeist. So, you know, I put that in the deck. The next card that I have in the deck is Magician's Right Hand. And so let's read that effect. And again, the effect of your opponent's first spell card or effect that resolves each turn while you control a spellcaster type monster. And if you do, or if it did not have an effect, destroy that card. Let's zoom back out. Like left hand again, we I have this card in there because Altergeist are a deck that like to negate. And let us remember that sometimes protocol is not enough. You know, it, it, it really isn't enough, you know, if you have a card like protocol. Sure, like, you know, that first turn I had looked pretty good. I activated protocol, special summon, multi-faker from our hand, allowing us to special summon Silcatus from our deck, and we could bounce, you know, a card from our on the field and bounce a card on their side of the field back to their hand. And we had one negation. However, it's not enough. Sure, with our negation, we could have uh, negated, you know, monster effect, send Melu Seek to the graveyard, allowing us to search. However, you know, we couldn't use spoofing that turn because we've already used the effect of Altergeist Multifaker, so we are definitely not going to be able to special it again. You know, there is a loop with that, you know, I'll explain about spoof. You know, you can check other deck builds, but the point I'm trying to make here is, is that we wouldn't have fully utilized, you know, that situation and we really wouldn't have slowed down the opponent that much. Plus, you know, in the next turn, if the car, if the opponent had the appropriate cards, they would definitely be able to wipe our board with the greatest of ease. But I want you to imagine a board like this. And now look at this board. This board now is much more intimidating than the board we had before. If we have right hand on the field, then that means the first spell my opponent will activate will be negated. With left hand, the first trap they activate will be negated. And with protocol as well, this allows us to negate any monster effect. Remember as well, we also have Silcatus, meaning that we can bounce back any card they have on the field. Now, look at that. Isn't this much more intimidating to face rather than just having one negate and one bounce? Now we have three negates and one bounce. And you know what? We could go even further. And so let me also talk about another card that we have or that I have put in this Altergeist deck. Another card I've put in Altergeists are Secret Village of Spellcasters. It's a field spell with the following effect. If you control a spellcaster type monster and your opponent does not, your opponent cannot activate spell cards. If you control no spellcaster type monsters, you cannot activate spell cards. Now, let us go back and, and show you the board again with all the cards from Okay, let's have a recap. Because we have Secret Village of the Spellcasters, unless my opponent controls a spell caster, they cannot activate spell cards. Now, if they are to get rid of Secret Village of the Spellcasters through other means, the effect of a Magician's Right Hand will activate. So any other spell, for spell they activate, or one of the spells, will be negated. You see there, we have an insulation. We have now four negates you know, four negates. And we have an interruption with Silcatus as well. This now is much more intimidating with only four cards in our back row already. Altergeists are starting to look very 
very frightening. They're starting to look very scary. Now, you see this. Why does this look so frightening? Why is this looking so scary? It's because I am using cards that strengthen the altergeist that focus on the altergeist strengths. Remember, as we have discovered, altergeists love to negate the opponent. They focus on the effects of negating an interruption. So I use cards that help in doing this. This is the aspect of deck building that you need to do. Remember, when you build a deck, it is extremely important that you look at the deck, read the effects of the cards if it's an archetype deck, whatever it is, increase the positive card relationships in that deck. Making a positive card relationships meaning that allowing you to add cards, you know, from your deck to your hand, you know, all these great stuff. You know, make sure to decrease the amount of negative card relationships that you will receive on your turn. And also be able to synergize with the archetype relationships of the archetype deck already has so for example looking at this yeah with protocol uh, with um left or right hand right if any of those cards get destroyed by my opponent or if the opponent does any of those things then with silkitas i can add protocol back to my hand if you know they manage to destroy the back row with with uh and also by negating you know monster effect with protocol by sending Melusik, I can add any Altergeist monster from my deck into my hand. You see there, you see right there, we have synergy. We have a strong relationship. But no, 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 let's go a step further. Let's go further beyond and tell you what other cards I've added in this deck. Okay, let's now the other spell I have is Spell Book of Power. Let's read that effect. Target one face up spellcaster monster I control. Until the end phase, it gains 1000 attack points. Also, until the each time it destroys an opponent's monster by battle, you can add one spell book spell card from your deck to your hand. You can only activate one spell book of power per turn. Now, this card is a card that is important and there's a reason why I put it in Altergeist. As you know, I've discussed before, we want to fill the weakness of Altergeist. Now, Altergeist don't have very high attack points. The attack points are very low. And most of the time, you know, you are going to struggle if you play, you know, this deck. Definitely, you're going to get beaten down by monsters with high attack. So how do we mediate this? We mediate this by adding a spell card that allows you to boost an attack. Uh, attack you know the attack of your altergeist monsters by 1000 and that when it successfully does this it allows you to add a spellbook spell card from your deck to your hand now that is going to be very important in one of the last spell cards in the deck that i have which is spellbook of power is going to search this spellbook spell card which is spellbook of knowledge its effect send to the graveyard, either one spellcaster monster I control or one other spellbook card from my hand or face up from your field, accept spellbook of knowledge. And if you do, draw two cards. You can only activate one spellbook of knowledge per turn. Let's zoom back out. Alrighty then. Here is another trap that I have put in Altergeist called Heavy Storm Duster. Let's read that effect. Target up to two spells and traps on the field. Destroy them. You cannot conduct your battle phase the turn you activate this card. And so in the deck, I have two of uh, Heavy Storm Duster in the deck. I have two, two of them. Why do I have two? I have two because this allows me to activate it usually during my opponent's turn. Then in my opponent's turn, I can uh, special summon a multi faker from my hand. But, you know, and this by this time I've destroyed, you know, their back row so definitely it's really good and then i can instigate you know my lockdown as i have explained earlier with the left and right hand and protocol as well now let's talk about the other extra deck monsters that i have in altergeist okay here are the rest of the 
extra deck monsters I have in Altergeist. So let's look at them one by one. Let's go starting from the left. We have Nightmare Phoenix. Let's read that effect. If this card is Link Summoned, you can discard one card, then target one spell or trap your opponent controls, destroy it. Then, then if this card was co-linked when this effect was activated, you can draw one card. You can only use this effect of Nightmare Phoenix once per turn. Co-linked monsters you control cannot be destroyed by battle. Let's go to the next monster, Nightmare Goblin. Let's read that effect. If this card is Link Summoned during your turn, you can discard one card. If this card was co-linked when this effect was activated, you can draw one card. Also during your main phase this turn, you can normal summon one monster from your hand to your zone this card points to, in addition to your normal summon or set. You can only apply this effect of Nightmare Goblin once per turn. Neither player can target co-linked monsters you control with card effects. Let's go to the next monster. Firewall Dragon. Let's read that effect. Once while face up on the field, quick effect, you can target monsters on the field and or graveyard up to the number of monsters co-linked to this card. Return them to the hand. If a monster this card points to is destroyed by battle or sent to the graveyard, you can special summon one monster from your hand. Let's go to the next monster, Nightmare Unicorn. Let's read that effect. If this card is Link Summoned, you can discard one card, then target one card on the field, return it to the deck. Then if this card was co-linked when this effect was activated, you can draw one card. You can only use this effect of Nightmare Unicorn once per turn. While any co-linked Nightmare Monsters are on the field, once per turn, draw in your draw phase one card for each different card name among those co-linked Nightmare Monsters instead of drawing just one card. Let's go to the next one, Nightmare Cer Cerberus. If this card is Link Summoned, discard one card, then target one special summoned monster in your opponent's main monster zone, destroy it. Then if this card was co-linked, when this effect was activated, you can draw one card. You can only use this effect of Nightmare Cerberus once per turn. Co-linked monsters you control cannot be destroyed by card effects. And finally, Nightmare Gryphon. Its effect. If this card is Link Summoned, you can discard one card, then target one spell or trap in your graveyard, set it to your field, but it cannot be activated this turn. Then, if this card was co-linked when this effect was activated, you can draw one card. You can also use this effect of Nightmare Griffon once per turn. Special summoned monsters on the field cannot activate their effects unless they are linked. Let's zoom back out. With all those effects I have mentioned, that looks pretty intimidating, right? Pretty scary. So when we make, uh, you know, Nightmare Phoenix, we can uh, destroy one spell or trap our opponent controls, as well as co-link it to Altergeist Hextia, meaning that we have a we have an Altergeist monster that cannot be destroyed by battle. You know, that's that's quite something. Although, if we do this, um, with Hextia, we won't be able to negate any effect because it's not pointing to an Altergeist monster. But this is something definitely to con take into consideration if we want to do something different, if we want to surprise our opponent. With Nightmare Goblin, for example, you know, most of our co-linked monsters cannot be targeted by card effects. This definitely gives us a serious boost here if we are going for the extra link and doing sexy things like that. We have Firewall, meaning that, you know, when we use that effect, we can special summon for days, put uh, monsters, you know, from our deck onto our side of the field, and, you know, and do some shenanigans over there. We have Nightmare Unicorn there as well, allowing us, you know, to return any card, you know, on the field, and our opponent's side of the field, you know, or our side even, to the deck to allow us to draw one card when it is co-linked on summon. We have Nightmare Cerberus, allowing us to destroy any monster in the main monster zone, or if not, you know, any, if you know what I'm talking about, anything like that. And if it is co-linked as well, draw one card. This is this uh, co-linked effect applies the same thing to Nightmare Phoenix. Now with Nightmare Cerberus, you know, while it's co-linked to a link, uh, link monster, you know, 
the cooling monsters cannot be destroyed by card effects while with nightmare unicorn you know at the start of our draw phase we get to draw the amount uh, amount of cards equal to the amount of cooling nightmare monsters that are on the field and finally we have nightmare griffin nightmare griffin allows us to draw a card when it's co-linked on summon and allowing us to set any spell or trap from our graveyard back down onto the field however we cannot activate it this turn and finally its other effect as well states that only link only special summoned monsters that are linked can activate their effect wow what a mouthful what effects, what devastation can we wreak with these exodic monsters that we have right here. Very, very intimidating. Definitely will scare our opponent to the next level. It is important that you understand the CAP system. The CAP system stands for comprehension, application and practicality. What does this mean? Every card in Yu-Gi-Oh! has a series of effects. These effects are linked to other cards in an archetype. They generally link to, you know, their spells or traps. All these cards can allow you to add cards from your deck to your hand, etc, etc, etc. It is important that you comprehend, that you understand the cards in your deck, understand how they work. Sometimes when you are practicing or when you duel with the deck you just made, you find you make a lot of mistakes because you do not understand your deck. You do not understand how it works. This is why it is important to, when you're building a new deck, just make the deck, you know? Don't be specific. Don't put any positive card relationships. Don't put any of the things that specified. The first thing you need to do is make your deck just make it you know go for it go go crazy make the deck after you've made the deck yeah and you have had some duels with the deck this will allow you to understand the deck understand its strengths and its weaknesses now the next time you go into deck building you will now know what you need to remove and what you need to keep the next thing is application as you are on your journey to deck building, you need to look at the cards in your deck and ask yourself this, are these cards applicable? Do I use them 90% of the time? If the answer is yes, then keep these cards. If the answer is no, then you need to seriously think about whether these cards really belong in your deck. And finally, we're talking about practicality. There could be some cards that you have in your deck that, in theory, sounds really, really good. And when you put them in the deck and you're like, oh my days, man, this is so good. You know, they're going to give me so many pluses. But on a practical scale, when you actually duel with the deck, you find you don't even use these cards. They don't, the situation in the duels never comes up to have the activation requirements for these cards to activate. This is called practicality. When you're building your deck, it's important to check that your cards are practical. However, you will not be able to do this if you're new to deck building, which is why it is important if you are new to deck building to build your deck first. Build it first, play test it. Play testing meaning go and practice, whether it's with a friend or it's online. Play test the deck first. Duel with what you have made First, after you have dueled with the deck and you understand the deck and know the cards in the deck that are applicable and that are practical, the solution to solve your deck will come on its own. It will come easier. Okay? The deck I have shown you is has gone through loads of playtesting. It has gone through experimentation. It has gone through um, loads of you know, cards which I had in there removed. You know, I used to have Wonder Wand. I don't have that anymore because why do I need an equip spell, for example? Is this practical? Yes, it allows me to draw two cards, but in Altergeist, do I really need that? 
you know, is that really practical? Possibly, you know, Spellbook of Power is much better. It not only boosts a monster's attack, uh, a monster's attack points, which fills up a weakness that Altergeists have, but allows me to add a draw card as well if I successfully destroy a monster. And I also have other cards as well that allow me to negate my opponent's effects, meaning that this definitely is an effect that will have a higher chance of pulling off and nine times out of ten it has pulled off so this is an example of what i'm talking about so remember when you're deck building to follow what i've said what i have just shown you here in this physical demonstration of Yu-Gi-Oh deck building is how you should build your deck remember this that is all that i have to say about this you are now one step closer to becoming a Yu-Gi-Oh! Master. My fate is in your hands. Like and subscribe. Hate and subscribe. You could decide to not subscribe at all. The choice is yours. Goodbye.